So now that we have a sense of what's happening in DDP, let's take a look at the code. In this video, we'll start with code for training on a single GPU and migrate that to multi GPU via DDP. This way, you'll see exactly what code changes you'll need. So in the single GPU code, we have a trainer class that takes the model, the training data, an optimizer, along with the device that we are running on and how often we should be saving our model checkpoints. The training happens in the run epoch method and we call train specifying how many epochs we want to run our training job on. We have a few helper functions, load train objects, essentially loads all of the objects you'll need or the ingredients you'll need for your training process, namely the training data set, the model itself and an optimizer. For this example, for the model, I'm just using a linear layer and the training data set is just some random numbers. When you're trying to replicate something like this, of course, you'll be using your own model and your own training data set. The optimizer is registered to all of the parameters of the model. I also have a function prepare data loader, which as the name suggests, takes your data set and wraps a data loader around it. I can specify the batch size over here. So I'm going to run the script for 50 epochs and save it at every 10th epoch. Device equal to zero essentially lets PyTorch know to use the first available GPU. So this should be pretty straightforward so far. If any of this looks unfamiliar or you'd like to refresh your memory, we have a few introductory tutorials on the PyTorch website. So now let's go ahead and migrate this to multi GPU via DDP. So first we're going to need a few modules. Torch.multiprocessing is a wrapper around Python's native multiprocessing. I also want a distributed sampler. This is essentially the module that takes in our input data and distributes it across all of our GPUs. The main workhorse over here, the DDP wrapper. And finally, these two functions initialize and destroy our distributed process group. So those are the modules that we'll need additionally. And one of the first things we want to do now is to initialize the distributed process group. And this process group consists of all of the processes that are running on our GPUs. Typically, each GPU runs one process and setting up a group is necessary so that all the process can discover and communicate with each other. So I'm going to write a small function that takes in two arguments, the rank and world size. The world size is the total number of processes in a group. And the rank is a unique identifier that is assigned to each process. So it usually ranges from zero to world size minus one. So in this function, I'm going to set some environment variables. The first one being the master address, which refers to the IP address of the machine that's running the rank zero process. In my case, since it is a single machine setup, my rank zero process is going to be on the same machine. So I'm just going to put local host over here. I'm also going to include any free port on this machine. So the reason this is called master is because this machine coordinates the communication across all of our uh, processes. Finally, I call init process group, which initializes the default distributed process group. It takes in an argument um, backend, which in our case is going to be nickel. So nickel is NVIDIA collective communications library, and that is the backend, which is used for um, distributed communications across uh, CUDA GPUs. I also need to pass in the rank and world size. So right now I'm taking these as arguments. I'm taking these in parameters of this function. Um, later we'll see how this is actually computed. So the trainer class mostly remains the same, except that before we start using our model or before we start training our model, we need to wrap it with DDP. And along with the model itself, it takes a device IDs argument. This is typically a single list consisting of the GPU ID that the model lives on. The other thing that you want to update is when you're saving your model state dict. Because we have wrapped it with DDP, self.model now refers to the DDP wrapped object. If we want to access the underlying model's parameters, we want to call model.module. So this actually gives us the underlying model's parameters. 
So the way DDP works is that it is going to launch a process on each GPU. Each process is going to initialize an object of the trainer class. And currently the way it is written, it's going to save a checkpoint from each process. This is going to create unnecessary redundancy. We are only interested in one copy since all of the copies are the same. So I'm just going to add a condition over here. So adding this condition ensures that the checkpoint is saved only from the rank zero process. The next thing I want to change is the data loader. I need to include the distributed sampler, which is what ensures that my input batch is going to be chunked across all of my GPUs without any overlapping samples. And since I'm passing a sampler to my data loader, I need to turn shuffle to false. Okay, we have uh, done most of the heavy lifting. Now we just need to update our main function. So the first thing we want to do is initialize our distributed process group. And we have written a function for that. We're just going to call it over here. I'm going to replace device with rank. And since we'll also need world size, I'll add that as an argument here. Both of our helper functions remain the same. Since we are no longer using device, I'm going to change this to rank. And finally, once my training job is run, I want to destroy the process group to cleanly exit our DDP training. All right, so now on to running this script. Here is where I use torch.multiprocessing. So I use mp.spawn, which takes in a function and then spawns that across all of our processes in the distributed group. So the function here that I need to spawn across our processes is main. And it has some arguments. So I use the args argument and pass it parameters, world size, total epochs, and save every. Notice that I'm not passing the rank over here. That's because mp.spawn will automatically assign that to each pond process of main. Finally, I also need to pass in nprox, which refers to number of processes. And here again, it's going to be world size because we want to spawn one process for each GPU that we have on this machine. And the way we calculate that is simply with torch.cuda.deviceCount, which returns to us how many GPUs are available on a machine. We don't need this anymore. So before we run this script, let's take a look at all of the changes that we made here. We first included a few more modules to be imported. Next, we wrote a function to set up the distributed process group where we assign certain environment variables and call init process group. We update our trainer class to ensure that our model is wrapped with DDP. When we are saving our model, Make sure that you use model.module instead of model.statedict. We also add a condition to check for the process rank. We only save the model if it is of rank zero. In the data loader, we pass the distributed sampler. This is what ensures that each of your GPUs receive non-overlapping samples. So it's really important. Make sure you do pass this. And we also turn shuffle to false because sampler manages that. And in the main function, before we actually run the training, we call DDP setup, which initializes the distributed process group. And once training is done, we destroy it. So I'm going to save the script. Okay, now for the moment of truth, I'm going to run this for 50 epochs and save it at every 10th epoch. Now you can see that there are four logging statements per epoch. In the single GPU setup, the batch size remained the same, 32. But we saw that it took 64 steps to run through the whole training data set. In this distributed setup, since we are using four GPUs, those 64 steps have quartered to 16. That is that training load has been divided across four GPUs. And this is what makes DDP so useful. If you have multiple GPUs, they can share the load of processing the training data and you can 
टिपिकली ट्रेन या मॉडल फास्टर 